this is going to be our complete E4 overview repertoire. Basically, from the lines I'm going to show you with this, you can use this video to take pictures of your repertoire and remind yourself what you're going to do. I'm going to hit every variation. I'm going to hit the Sicilian. I'm going to hit the French. I'm going to hit the Carl Kahn. I'm going to hit the Symmetrical King Pawn. I'm going to hit the Philidor. I'm going to hit the Perk. I'm going to hit the Modern. I'm going to hit the Alakine. I'm going to hit the Center Counter. There's nothing I covered there. Use chessgames.com and look at some of the other variations. So we're going to start from most popular to least popular. So with the Sicilian, at Nationals, you're going to face the Sicilian or you're going to face E5 on move one. If you get four whites, you're going to face those probably the most by far. So that being the case, I'm giving you two different lines to choose from in the Sicilian. One is the Alpin, one is the Closed. You can play it against every Sicilian variation. So with Knight C3, this is the Closed Sicilian. Put the Knight on E2. And our basic structure is going to be this for white. Well, we play h3 to be able to put our bishop here. We don't want the knight to be able to come and kick our bishop. And after b5, queen d2. I'm not worried about b4. And then after f4, the plan is literally to throw your kingside pawns at the guy, try to rip him open, and mate him. He's getting queenside space. You just go after his king. All right. That is one variation. So going back, after c5, if you play c3, this is the Alpen variation. This is another option against the Sicilian. There's really only two ways the guy can play against the Alpen. He can play knight f6, push the pawn a lot like in the Alakine, and after d4, takes, takes, and you just develop your pieces to normal squares. This knight comes here, this bishop comes here, We're thinking about f7. I don't want to put this knight here until this knight leaves because I want this knight to come on e4. This bishop's probably coming to f4 or g5, and we're castling kingside because the c-file's open. The other variation of the Alpen is after d5, takes, takes, knight f3, and we have this interesting move, knight a3, because of the idea of knight b5, where we're threatening here, forcing the queen to go back, and we accomplish d4. Now we're just going to be able to put our pieces on decent squares. Bishop here, bishop here, castle. This knight's probably coming here. And we got a game. Alright, next up, we got e5. After knight f3, keep in mind that there are multiple variations that black can play. He can play this stupid move with f5. He can play knight f6. And he can play d6, which will all be covered in another video that goes along with this. But I will just touch on the main line after knight c6. We got bishop c4. And then there's two branches. There's knight f6 and there's bishop c5. So first on knight f6, we've got knight g5. Everybody and their mom is attacking f7. Keep in mind if they play bishop c5, the best line is to take and then come back. You don't want to get into the nonsense of knight takes f7. I promise you. You can look it up in the database. It's just stupid nasty. So after knight g5, we got d5. Only way to protect f7 feasibly. Takes. Check. Takes. And the key move, bishop d3. The point is, is that when h6 is played, we have a good square for this knight to go back to and our pieces don't get kicked around. All right. So going back to move three, bishop c4, we got knight f6. Bishop c5, move 3. c3, much like the Alpen, we are playing to get control over the center. Knight f6, attack of the pawn, we defend it. We eventually can play d4. Castles, castles, d6, h3, preventing any pins. a6, bishop b3. The idea is that we don't want to be kicked by any of these moves, and we want to save this bishop for later, so after we play d4, potentially h6, he prevents our bishop from the square. Knight bd2, rook e1, knight f1, and the idea is being able to maneuver to f5. Look at the diamond. So after rook e8, bishop e3, getting rid of his best piece. Takes, takes, and now we're going to play g4, 
and knight f5 and get a decent game. And this is the Italian game played by top players. All right, so going back, after e4, we covered extensively in class how to play the black side of the exchange. The plan is still the same with the white side. It's the same pawn structure. You want to trade off this guy for this guy. This is your bad bishop because of the pawn being stuck on the same color as the bishop. Your plan is to trade that off 100%. You want to keep this guy. Trade off this guy for this guy. Put your pieces on good squares. Play a game of chess. What's the problem? One variation covers the French. Done. C6, Karo Khan. All right? Take. And you put your pieces on the same squares as the French. Memory markers, easier to remember. He plays knight f6. Here's the best move. Bishop f4, because this bishop wants to come here. So, if he goes there, we trade. And we get rid of our bad bishop for his good one. Again, same plan. Your bishop g4, knight e2. Queen b3, space left behind. He's got to defend the weakness. And after knight d2, we're going to castle. We're going to get a game of chess. No problems. Karo Khan, French, Sicilian, and King Pawn solved. All right, now let's go to some of the less popular variations. d6, take the center. When they don't take the center, you take the center. Knight c3, g6. Now, any position to where there's castling on opposite wings. You're going to go this side. He's going to go this side. We throw the pawns at each other. So, f3. Key move. We want to keep this knight out of g4 and later have the ability to use that as a lever. So, bishop g7, bishop e3, castles, queen d2. Now, we have gone opposite sides. Lock it. And then slam the guy. We want to play just to waste a bunch of moves for black. Just to show you the emphasis of how devastating this attack is, your plan no. is to come here, and when I take, it's going to end up in the checkmate. So, that's what we're going for. You can also do this against the modern. He's attacking. We still want to use the same type of plan, plan h5. If he plays h5, then we start maneuvering around and figuring out what we can do elsewhere. So if he starts attacking, we attack too. Eventually playing moves like g4 is really nasty. Okay. So now going back. Now we've covered the Pirates and the Modern. Now it's knight of 6 Kick the piece. Anytime you can kick a piece in game time, do it. Bishop c4, knight b6. Save the bishop. Move the knight out. Now we're attacking f7, threatening mate. So he plays e6. Now you can play d4, or you can speculate playing a move like queen f3. Interesting game. Just attack a whole bunch. You'll do okay. So after e4, if d5, center counter, Scandinavian, known by both names, takes d4. And we want to defend this pawn so we can castle queenside. And this is our basic structure. Black is going to want to castle kingside. And then we do the same thing as we talked about earlier. When you castle on opposite wings, you use your pawns to rip the guy open. All right, overall, this was a complete overview, a repertoire that you could play against anything king pawn. This is a very simple repertoire. You can go more in depth, or you can use this, make pictures, do everything you need from this, start playing against each other, get this down. This concludes...